How's it going folks? Had a bit of interest in a couple of seed saving shots I posted to Instagram and Facebook over the last week or so. So I thought I'd bring you along and just show you how I saved the seeds to share around for those folks who wanted a little bit more information. Now, saving tomato seeds, there's loads of clips out there. I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, there's a lot of easy methods. There's the squeeze the tomato on the paper towel method. Um, I've even grown tomatoes by squeezing them straight into the soil and they germinated fine. Um, and this method I'm showing you today is a fermentation method. I also use this method on cucumber seeds uh, just to give nice clean seeds when it's time to share them out. So I thought I'll bring you in closer, just show you the tomatoes I'm going to save. They're actually from the plant behind me here that's growing over the top of the chook pen. I might give you a look at uh, that plant at the end of the clip but for now I'll bring you down and I'll show you the tomatoes I'm going to save. These are the broad ripple yellow currant tomatoes I'll be saving seeds from today. We've got these guys pop up all over the patch. They're a great volunteer. Just like to thank What's Am Doing. She's got a channel here on YouTube. Thanks Karen for the original seed we got of these a couple of years ago. These things have been a bit of a lifesaver when it comes to us being able to grow tomatoes. We get hit by Queensland fruit fly here, a very devastating little pest and they pretty much will target our large tomatoes. These guys here they leave alone so we can grow these guys year round so I've always got a few tomatoes to um, throw in a meal. Now the actual tomatoes when you're looking at which tomato to pick I tend to leave these ones that aren't ripe and aren't mature. I leave these guys alone and I go for the darker looking fruit. This one here has actually fallen off the vine by himself so I've popped him aside for the clip. Um, nice and plump, a little bit soft, full of juice so these are the fruit you're looking for not the slightly underripe ones. He'll go aside to go up to the house. The way I like to do the fermentation is pretty easy. I just grab a jar, I label the jar, yellow currant, then just grab these guys and it's as easy as taking the top off and squeezing him in and popping these tomatoes aside to go on a pizza later. The seed goes in, any pulp can go in and the juice as well. It's good to grab a fair bit of juice and there you go. There's all your seeds with a little bit of juice and the pulp in there. Now what's going to happen is these seeds are going to ferment in here and the fermentation process will, if I can grab one out to show you, so the fermentation process breaks down the little gel sac around the outside of the seed, leaving you with a nice clean looking seed, pretty much all like it's just come out of a commercial packet. So these seeds here, there's a fair bit of liquid in there, but what I might do is just add a little bit more and that'll just stop the seeds from drying out and keep the fermentation process humming along. So what I like to do is just put a lid on it and because it's going in the kitchen that'll just stop any foul odours. Um, they don't really smell that much. So there we go, all labelled and ready to sit on the shelf. So after these guys have been sitting for two or three days, it becomes fairly obvious that they've started to ferment. You end up with a white layer over the top of the seeds and the liquid, and that pretty much all shows you that there's an active colony of um, yeast and bacteria in there breaking down those gel sacs. So when it comes time to collect the seed, it's very easy. All you need to do is add some extra water to the jar, give it a bit of a swish around, break up all that mold and get the little bits of pulp floating around, and then pour it off. You'll find all the good viable seeds will sink to the bottom, and you just repeat that process three or four times, and that pretty much will takes all the crud out of the jar. Then all I do is put a sieve over the end of it, strain the rest of the liquid out and then scoop out the seeds with my fingers, put it on a little plate to dry and there you go. So these are some of the brain tomato seeds you just saw me clean out of the jar and these are the ones from the photo that I posted on Instagram. Pretty much well dry now. So when it comes time to store these little guys what I like to do is put them in little Ziploc baggies as you can see there brain tomato collected June 2015. Uh, it lets people know who received the seeds how old they are. Just grab a few seeds. I don't really count them out just a pinch full and they go in the baggie and they'll go off to their new home soon enough. So that's pretty much what all there is to collecting and saving these tomato seeds. So there you go, I hope that helps the folks out who were interested in seeing how I save these seeds. Now, just quickly too, when you're saving seeds, it does pay to only save from heirloom varieties. Now, heirloom varieties is an old variety, say you like your Cherokee purples, some of your Romas, that sort of thing. They're seeds that will grow true to type to what their parents were. So you'll get like fruit from, you know, the fruit that you've saved the seeds from. When you save seeds from some supermarket and store-bought varieties, you know, the ones that look all the same, they taste all the same, they're all the same size, um, those guys there are most likely going to be a cross uh, pollinated, a hybrid, an F1 variety seed and they won't necessarily grow true to type. In fact they probably pretty much won't, you can be guaranteed that. That's mainly due to 
one of the parents being used because it is a maybe a fast producer and the second one because it'll give consistent sized fruit they cross them they get a fast producing consistent sized fruit other things are sacrificed like flavor and maybe texture so just thought I'd let you know about that. Also have a couple of other seed saving clips if you want to suss them out. Things like saving marigold seed, cucumber and also eggplants. And I'll pop up a propagation playlist. It's got things like um, how we make up our seed tape for our carrots and that sort of thing. Suss them out if you're interested. I would like to thank you all for coming along. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Other than that, I hope everyone is well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. But before we go, here's a quick look at the yellow currant tomato. This is the plant that those little fruit were saved from. It's growing over the top of our chicken pen. I thought I'd just bring you down here and show you where it's growing from. It's growing out of the pavers, believe it or not. There's a couple of pavers that's just growing out of a uh, crack there. I actually think it might be two plants. There's one there and one there. So all this fruit is coming from those two plants. So I correct myself. Um, it is absolutely mammoth. It's growing inside the pen there. We'll come around and have a look from the back. Here's a look at it from a different angle. This is from standing on top of a Mexican tarragon bed. It's absolutely covering the whole top of the chicken pen there. So a very impressive plant. The chickens are eating loads of it. We're eating loads of it. There's actually another one that's popped up down there. And down here in my little weed patch around my comfrey, we have a whole heap more that's sprouted. So there you go. I thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at the plant that the fruit came from. Hope you've enjoyed that look and have a great one. Cheers.